So let's stocks. start with Anglo Gold Ashanti. It has a diverse portfolio of mining operations and projects on four continents. Go to the point that Paul was yes. um, making earlier in that these are now diversified from a geographic perspective, not just South Fabulous African. Fabulous job players. that the management team, successive Bobby Godsall, Mark Kutafani, and now Ben Katakrishnan have done in terms of the transition of the business into a global player. So they sold a lot of their South African assets and they've concentrated on Africa. South America, some in the Americas, also across in Australia, they've really diversified to the extent that actually the South African operations are not really significant at all in terms of the overall contribution. Market cap here is 117 billion rand. It's currently not profitable or paying dividends. And with each of these discussions, I think we need to put up the share price graph because yeah. we can see that very, very sharp upturn very nice. uh, given months, what yeah. has happened to the underlying gold price. And the quantum of that is enormous because I think what do you think the bottom is there on that graph? 70 rands a share and where do you yeah. think it is now? 260 or thereabouts. That's a tremendous move. Yeah. Wayne if you the had called this months, right if you, you could have retired. Right. Quite correct. I mean, <laughs> understand if you look at if you look at gold fields <laughs> and all of them that we're going to talk about except Pan-African which is a bit different. They've got all in cost of production at call it $900, between $900 and $950 an ounce. When your price goes in the last six months from $1,100 to $1,300, your profit margin doubles and doubles again. That's why these are very marginal. For a relatively small increase in your sell selling price, but when you're starting at break even, your margin just goes through the roof. So these mines have been extremely profitable for the last six months in the last 15 years. They've made money. Now, the key question is, of course, whether they can hold their, their current share prices or even ramp up further. Look, I think Anglo Gold Ashanti is by far the best producer of the lot. They've really gone around the world finding the highest margin operations, those that are least susceptible, in order to get their cost of production down. And that is really wonderful. And I think they've done the best job also in terms of their financing model. They've aggressively sought out opportunities to pay away expensive debt and replace that with cheaper debt in the current environment. I think they do a very good job of communication. My mate Stuart Bailey, who's the uh, investor relations and strategic finance chief, does a tremendous job of communicating the, the company's plans. So I think they're going to continue to do well because they really have worked hard to make sure that they are not the firing line, not in the firing line, if gold prices were to go down or if currency is moving. So all them. of these businesses are right-sized to the point that you're making for a lower gold price. Yes, and you must remember that, that these companies have had a torrid time over the years because the costs have just been escalating and not so much because the, of electricity or labor or anything, it's actually to do with the amount of gold that's in the ground. Now, only a quarter of Anglo Gold's gold comes from South Africa, mm. but this is the case worldwide with most of their deposits. You know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it was easy to get, I don't know, seven grams per ton of gold at maybe 800 meters depth. Mm. Now you're getting two grams of ton per gold at two kilometers depth. So it's just the sheer cost of getting that now lower quality ore out of the ground that's actually mm -hmm. contributed to the massive, massive rise in the rand per ounce or rand per kilogram of gold. Are we ready to call this one? Yeah, look, I think the outcome of that conversation, though, is to recognize that if it's harder to produce, then that's going to be a little bit less supply. supply. Correct. And the it's demand your, your side normal of the equation, demand supply equation. Yeah, it's more favorable. Yes. It is more favorable. Yes. The demand side, though, is a bit iffy because we know that central banks are not as committed to gold as they used Listen, to be. We, is that no, no, really no, so I, small? No, I think mm. you need to stand down on this because mm. look at the new environment. We've just seen Brexit. You said mm. Brexit's not over. Yes. Where do people go? They look for safe havens. And, and this is what all the gold bulls have been waiting yeah, for. But look, gold bulls, safe haven status gold, to kick gold in. Gold bulls, well, gold bulls are fine as long as you own the physical. The gold bulls on the shares, there's very, very few of them around. But who knows what drives gold? It always used to be high inflation. No, now there's there no few inflation. Of them now we're worried about retired. deep Those guys all just retired. They don't need to work anymore. <laughs> but do you think the safe haven thing I works anymore? Come on, guys. You cannot argue when against the, when the safe haven When there's trouble in the world, look at nobody what can be bothered. It doesn't look go Look what look. happened now with Brexit. No, no, fair gold enough. rallied yeah, to all time rally. highs. You no, cannot it, argue it, with that. It, it, I'm not arguing with that, but it rallied from 1,100 per 
per ounce beginning of the year to 1,300. That's not doubling and tripling. Guys, eh? That's it went actually to a very all time highs that on the back of chart. this yeah, news they flow. They found the gold chart Let's yet because I'd like to see the gold chart over a relatively short period. I cannot see period. you guys arguing your way out of this. No, because the safe haven anything. thing used to be a lot of people would do that. But then, you know, in, in 2008, 2009, when the worst crisis blew gold in, clipped. gold didn't do anything. Didn't so really? it's like I'm talking the idea about, guys, last week, you yeah. get two One days. of the biggest international events we've ever seen. That's not the biggest we've ever seen. It is seen. trading at all-time highs. It doesn't matter. Of it's all the, the asset classes thing. that rallied, yeah. what happened? The Swiss franc uh, strengthened. But now that and equity gold markets have gone back up again, did the it's gold price its go do, down? Do you see it dipping? Do yeah, you see it dipping? Yeah. Do you? Come on. There we go. There's the chart, the one-week chart of gold. So yeah. in the 28th, 29th, that's when the Brexit decision came through, and it's moved from 1315. Whoops, they changed to a three-month chart. Guys, okay. the most important thing here is that it is still tracking at near all-time highs. Yeah. But mm. It has not pulled back after the fury has look, supposedly passed. I, I fully understand this allure that gold has. I mean, it's somewhere in our psychology going back 8,000 years <laughs> that we like to put it in our hands and stroke it. But it's a non-income producing asset. You have got to rely on continued turmoil for the price to go up. I mean, I'm not too sure that's an investment decision because there you're just saying, well, is the world going to be a disaster going forward, therefore I'm buying gold? Mm. Or can I at least base it on something? And quite frankly, I don't know what to base gold on. Okay, so if you look at that chart, it's actually not near all-time near all highs because we nearly went to $2,000 an ounce. Exactly. Back yeah. in the day. But in then, to be fair... But that, yes... It's sort of at its recent highs. Yes, yeah, at its recent highs. <laughs> but look, you know, the problem with gold is when it went to $2,000, every person and their dog was calling $4,000. You know, next step was 700 That's the problem. It's such a difficult thing. I want thing. to have this chat in six months' time after we've seen more countries coming out of the EU. Yeah. And, and maybe, Wayne, those gold bulls are right. But look, we're talking mm. about the gold shares. Yes, we are. All right, the let's gold, get back to gold, Are we going hot or not on Anglo Gold Ashanti? Off to the current run. I just can't do it. Hot or not? I'm going to call it hot because I think they have done everything that needs to be done in order to turn it into a reliable profit producer. I was quite surprised to see no profits and no dividend yield because I think if you but take the more recent yeah. quarter, they are on a trend to deliver solid profits, solid cash flow and solid dividend distributions even. Yeah. So, so you're hot. going? Hot. On hot. You're not hot. hot. Mm. Not off to the current run. So